Welcome to our first virtual hand-in-hand -hand benefit. I'm Emily Peck, Executive Director at Clay Art Center. And I'm James Pastor, Program Director. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are here for the 14th annual Hand in Hand, which is a celebration of Clay Art Center in our community. Normally we're in person, but this year we're going to do things a little differently. Even though we can't be together, I'm so glad you're all joining us to celebrate all the elements that make Clay Art Center a special place. We are broadcasting live from our resource room here at Clay Art Center. Um, in line with our studio safety measures and policies, um, you'll notice Emily and I are both wearing our masks tonight. Um, masks are required on campus here at Clay Art Center. Um, and we will be sharing a series of videos tonight uh, to help tell the CAC story. Um, important to mention, you'll see a few folks tonight in those videos not wearing masks. They were recorded uh, pre-pandemic. Um, so tonight's mission for Hand in Hand is really to help support our vital operations and programs. So our scholarship program, our residencies, our community arts programs are all dependent on your support. Um, and your giving tonight is incredibly important to securing the future of for CAC. So um, with that said, Emily, should we get started with checking on the fundraising numbers? Yeah, so our goal tonight is to raise $115,000. And that's a combination of your ticket purchases, donations, and the bids that you're putting in on our auction items. Uh, so far, we're at $69,000 to our goal, which is really impressive. And thank you all so much for your generosity so far. Um, in order to donate or bid on our auction, you can see right below me, um, there should be some QR codes on the screen. The QR codes, um, if you hold up your camera and you um, on your phone to it, it'll help take you to the website. So there's one to donate and one to auction. If you're not familiar with QR codes or not ready to use them, we also have a link there as well that can help you find that all. Um, behind me and around the room, you'll see a lot of our auction items. Um, there's uh, 70 of them in total. Uh, we're gonna feature a few of them throughout the evening and the rest you'll be able to see on the website. The auction runs until tomorrow night. Um, the first part of the auction closes at eight o'clock and that's the sculptural part. The cups close at 8.15 and the functional items close at 8.30 p.m. Uh, so you have some time to think about what you want to bid on and get in your bids. Um, thank you to all the artists from Clay Art Center community, our current and former residents, and other nationally recognized ceramic artists who generously donated these amazing pieces to the auction. We really appreciate it. Um, the first piece that you can see here uh, is from a longtime member of the Clay Art Center community, Rainy Murray. Uh, this is Castle on a Base. Um, this architectural stoneware sculpture is slab built and decorated with slip and epoxy. And it's just one of the items that you can bid on tonight. Um, and now we're going to head into our first video, which is a conversation between myself and our founding director, Rena Kashup, talking about the past uh, of Clay Art Center, our history, um, what we've been through in this last year, and where we hope to go in the future. So enjoy the video. Hello, everyone. My name is Rena Kashup, and I'm a potter and a former executive director at Clay Art Center. So it was a year ago, exactly a year ago, that Emily joined us as our executive director. I'm sure it was, it's been quite a ride. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> been an interesting year. Not the year that you know, any of us at Clay Art Center or anywhere in the world really expected. But I think what really inspired me was the community that's here. Um, really, everybody came together um, to help us get through this difficult time from our board to our staff, to our artists, students, teachers, our residents. You know, everyone's first question to me was, how can they help? How can they help you know, get us through this time? Um, and that you know, really meant a lot to me, but it was also, you know, it's so important to have all these people who are fighting to help us get by. You know, we're in a strong place for the future. You've obviously had a long and storied career with uh, Clay Art Center. I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, what brought you here and what's kept you here all this time. I've been involved since 97, and I was a father that lived nearby in Westchester and um, always knew about the Clay Art Center and came in and out to do workshops. Uh, they ran incredible programs. It was really in 97 when it was about to close its doors that um, kind of shook me with the news that that was going to happen. And I felt I couldn't be complacent and I had to do something about it. Catherine Choi and Henry Okamoto had founded this place in 1957. It really left me in awe and um, really wanting to know more of why this woman who was all of 25 years of age and was already a professor at Tulane University and gave up her job to start a center, the first of its kind in the East Coast dedicated to ceramic artists. I came in, we did the work, and I always wanted to make it a nonprofit. And 10 years later, in 2006, it was formally incorporated into a nonprofit. And now it's a community asset. It belongs to everybody. Something I've seen is you know, all the different pieces, but it does belong to everybody. And also knowing that Clare Center has been through such challenging times in the past, 
has always gotten through stronger or something that you know really held on to during this time. You suddenly found yourself leading an organization in an unprecedented crisis. And how did you pivot? Yeah, I think the first thing was, you know, everyone's feeling so isolated and alone. And how do we uh, offer opportunities for people to connect? So we set up weekly virtual happy hours with the artists where we could get together and you know talk about what people are going on in their lives and also you know how are they setting up home studios and giving each other tips and ideas. Um, you know the students, um, some of our longtime classes, were meeting regularly on uh, Zoom just to catch up with each other, see what's going on. Um, and then we slowly started introducing play into it. We uh, had virtual classes for adults and youth, and we had, then we had virtual artist talks, which were really been amazing and something that we're going to keep going even after we get through this time. Now that we're back in the studio, you know, set up some COVID protocols, we're wearing our masks. You know, we're being really careful, um, but we're having classes and. We have a lot of our regular students are back, which you know miss all of them. It's been great to see them. So in the beginning of October, we launched our after-school program for Fort Chester youth, um, free and low-cost after-school classes. Um, and those ones filled up really quickly, just like everyone else. They're excited to be back in person with people um, and be, you know, have opportunities to, you know, be creative and do something different. Um, so it's been really fun to see them back here. I'm really happy to hear that because keeping young, young children creatively engaged is so important yeah. uh, as, as their development. Yeah, and especially right now. Too, the I fact think. that we can do it, that you're doing it is like amazing. What are you excited about for the future of Play Art Center? Being in person, being in big groups again, having hand in hand where we can all be together and we can celebrate, you know, in a room as we have done in the past, build up some new audiences. Um, we have lots of opportunities to continue growing our program to serve people in Port Chester and beyond. And so I think looking at, you know, how do we continue to grow? I think we've really learned that, you know, this has been a difficult time um, and you know, all of your support and all the amazing donors and supporters we've had have helped us. Um, but there's also so much opportunity um, and people are really looking for ways to get away from the you know, terrible news we often hear and do something different. And so I think we offer that and excited to look at new ways to continue doing that. Thank you, Rena, for your leadership and dedication to Clay Art Center. It's been so wonderful working with you. Um, as you've heard in the video, I've been at Clay Art Center a year since uh, our last hand in hand. Um, but James, you've been here a little bit shorter than that. You want to talk a little bit about your experiences in new, as a new staff member and your impressions of Clay Art Center? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for asking. So, you know, having only joined the team a few weeks before shutdown, I was pretty unsure how the following months would play out. And it was a little scary, actually, but I couldn't have been happier to join an organization that's been, you know, so dedicated to thriving through the challenges of COVID. Um, also being a part of a leadership team that's really dedicated to a growth model and moving forward and really um, positioning CAC's, um, you know, um, leadership in the field and, and helping us move forward and growing. So it's been really special. Um, one of the most rewarding parts since we've reopened um, has been meeting so many of the CAC artists. Um, you know, in July, we reopened and, and opened our studios back to them. And, you know, seeing, um, you know, getting to meet them, hear their stories, some who have been here for decades, seeing what they're making in the studio and their passion and dedication to um, the organization has been really incredible. So um, speaking of CAC artists, we have this wonderful sculpture next to me. Um, this is by Marilyn Riqueda, um, she's a longtime um, CAC artist. This is titled uh, Pear Portrait, the sculpture. It is a slab built base uh, adorned by this really beautiful slip cast pear. Um, it's terracotta clay and it is fired in um, a gas kiln right here at Clay Art Center. And this other piece that you'll see by me is by another Clay Art Center artist, uh, Jennifer Cherpock. Um, this is an agate vase, uh, it's a nod to agate ware. It's real throne, carved porcelain with a colored clay body, and it's also uh, fired in our gas kilns at Clay Art Center. Um, you know, like you, James, I think working with the Clay Art Center artist community has been really wonderful um, and getting to see their creativity and their passion um, for this place. You can see the range of techniques and styles in the work that's in our auction, um, in our online shop, in our gallery um, from our artists. And you can also see their dedication um, as soon as we need volunteers for anything, they're here, they're helping paint things, they're um, helping us with photos, really anything we need. And I really, you know, have been so thankful um, for their dedication and support of the Clay Art Center community. Um, now I want to introduce a video with one of our artists, Erlene Cox, uh, an artist and a board member here, and talking about what brought her to Clay Art Center 
and what's really kept her here and what she loves about the Clay Art Center community. Um, so now we'll hear a little bit from Arlene. after retiring from a 25-year career as a lawyer and a corporate executive. I started with Clay primarily to try to save myself from Alzheimer's disease after seeing it devastate my mother. I was looking to find an art medium that would allow me to develop the artistic parts of my brain, which I generally did not use. The first time I touched Clay, I fell in love. For me, it has proven to be the perfect art medium. As a sculptor, it allows me to use both hands, which of course means that I'm using both sides of my brain. That is both therapeutic and healing. Just as exciting as discovering clay was my discovery of the Clay Art Center. I enrolled, and as they say, the rest is history. That was more than five years ago, and now I have a studio at the Clay Art Center, and it has just been a wonderful experience and an awesome place to create art. I view it as my wonderful adult playground. One of the things that makes the Clay Art Center unique is the artist program. What is most significant about the program is how much I have learned from my fellow artists. As an artist without any traditional art education or training, I've been able to learn so much from the classes, but much, much more from the relationships I've built and the informal education I've gotten from being around artists who so generously share their knowledge and skills. While it is a community of artists, it is so much more. The relationships and friendships that I've been able to form with my fellow artists feels more like a family. I am inspired by their individual and collective creativity and by their generosity in sharing their knowledge experience, advice, and counsel whenever I need it. It is for this reason that I joined the Clay Arts Center Board of Directors to try to ensure that this awesome, awesome organization has continued success. Thank you, Arlene, for sharing your story. Um, it's such a great story about how you ended up at Clay Art Center. Um, 20 years ago, Clay Art Center expanded our artist program by bringing in young artists for one or two year residencies. The residency program gives them time to create a body of work and we engage them as, in the community as teachers. Um, and it's really been wonderful to see the energy and creativity our new artists bring to us each year um, while they're at Clay Art Center. I've also enjoyed getting to know many of our past artists and residents and see the amazing accomplishments they have made as ceramic artists, teachers, arts administrators. Um, I know many of them are on the um, with us at the benefit tonight, um, and it's been really nice to get to know them <laughs> virtually. And I'm really hoping that we get to meet each other in person sometime soon. Um, so thanks all of you for being here and being part of the Clay Art Center community. Um, James, you work closely with the uh, residents. Can you talk a little bit about the program? Sure. Yeah, I do. I'm really grateful to be able to work with them pretty much every day, um, you know, and I think what makes uh, our residency program here at CAC so special is how our residents are incorporated into all of our other programs. Um, you know, with so many things going on, it's easy to have, you know, them stuck doing their own thing, but we really try hard to have our residents incorporated into so many other facets. Um, they take a huge teaching role in both our adult and youth education and community arts programming. So they're, they're really important to our teaching staff. Um, and they are working besides and next to the CAC artists other instructors and students um, on a daily basis. So they're really incorporated into, you know, normal operations and people get to really meet them and know them, which is wonderful. Um, every year, one of our resident artists is uh, funded by a grant from the Westchester Community Foundation. Um, and that resident's uh, primary focus is on youth programming and community arts programming. Um, and this year, that Westchester fellow is Bree Hendricks. Um, hi, Bree. Um, we love you. And your giving tonight is, is really so important to help continue the residency program, the funding that we 
do tonight um, it helps us maintain this platform to support young emerging artists and 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 give them um, uh, a place to time and place to to build, make, and learn. So um, so with that said, uh, we are almost at um, seventy six thousand out of our one hundred and fifteen thousand dollar goal tonight. So um, that's that's great. We're we're not there yet, but keep going. Don't be shy at home. Um, and since we're talking about residents, I have this wonderful sculpture next to me. Hi, Austin. This is um, made by our second year artist in resident, Austin Coudre. Um, it is titled Orange Cage Vase. This is one of my favorites. Um, it consists of a wheel thrown piece up top and it's sort of encased by this hand built scaffolding um, made out of cone six stoneware and fired in um, oxidation and electric kiln. Yeah, and this other piece by me is by one of our early artists in residence, Stephen Lee. Uh, he was with us in, from 2001 and 2002, um, and he now runs Archie Bray, and so one of our colleagues out in the field. Um, and he generously donated this beautiful piece that is uh, a vase in porcelain with copper inlay and glaze. Um, and there's a few other pieces uh, from our residents in the auction tonight. Um, and now you get to hear a little bit from this year's residents, um, Austin and Maria and Bree. And so we'll go to the video. I'm excited to be at the Clara Center this year. I'm really excited to get another sense of community. I've always really enjoyed the sense of community here and um, I really enjoy teaching. So I'm super excited to be back on site in classes and teaching classes again. The first thing that stood out to me about Clay Art Center is a really strong sense of community and strong support for new artists coming into the programs here. They also have a really large um, student body that I'm interested in getting to know better. I think that working with the Porchester community and building ties with this community is important and I want to continue to help do that. Teaching classes to children, teaching adult classes as well, has been really rewarding for me and I'm excited to see what happens next. I hope to accomplish um, developing a body of work that I'm really proud of. And so I've come in with some good ideas and they're giving me a lot of time and space to just evolve naturally. What I want to be making it and kind of how I want to view my work in a sense of the world as it is now. I'm happy to be a resident because I get to learn from the community and expand Port Chester's play art community. I'm working with children, adults, and I'm bringing fun and creative passion back to ceramics, back into the art. During the shutdown, I went home back to Nebraska for six months, quite a change of uh, scenery and quite a change of pace of life. I definitely didn't expect to be gone that long. It made me rethink a lot about my work. Clay Art Center has a great reputation. I'm hoping to walk away with a stronger sense of community and just a good sense of general togetherness. I'm really looking forward to the year here. I get to wake up every day and come here and make work and make art. And I get to enjoy everyone's good energy here at Clay Art Center. And I'm excited to do that. <laughs> Great, thanks so much, Bree, Austin, and Maria. It's uh, really wonderful to hear what drives the three of you, and I'm looking forward to spending the next year together. Um, so, Emily, with uh, all that information about the residency program and all, all the support that we need to keep it going strong, how are we doing with the fundraising numbers? Yeah, so we're so far up to 77,000 of our $115,000 goal. Um, so thanks to all of you for continuing to donate and to bid on auction items. Um, you know, as a reminder, we have these great items all around that you can bid on, including this uh, teapot and tray by Brenda Quinn from a private collection. Um, this teapot has underglaze and resist. Um, and James is showing the lovely details at the bottom. Beautiful. Um, and then you can also see on the base, there's some really great details as well. Um, so this is a beautiful piece that you can bid on tonight. Um, if you remember that there's the QR code, which is down here, um, and you can use that to get to both donate and to the auction. And um, you can also use the link that we'll be putting in the chat box as well. Um, now I want to introduce the Clay Arts Quintet. They were organized by John Clay, the husband of Jane Cohen, a Clay Arts Center artist. Uh, the quintet includes Grammy-winning New York Yankee, Bernie Williams, um, and they performed a number of songs um, just for us um, that they recorded for tonight's gala. So. Um, now you'll get to hear them perform Sissy Strut. Enjoy the music. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, that was just a wonderful set of music. Thank you, John, and the rest of the Clay Arts Quintet. It was uh, really wonderful to have you make this music for us. We couldn't have you with us live this year, but this is the next best thing, absolutely. So for those of you who haven't figured out yet, I am not James. I am Wendy Weinstein. I'm the Director of Development. We've swapped seats temporarily. I want to jump in and just tell all of you how wonderful it is to have you join us tonight. Thank you so much. This is just such an exciting event every year. And while we can't do it in person, it's a pleasure to be able to come to you in some shape or form. So if you'll notice to the left of me, we've got some beautiful cups. These are donated to us by Hayne Bayless. Two of these pieces are in auction. And I know there's been some bidding activity. 
The third one is actually the door prize some of you may have heard about. And I am thrilled tonight to announce that Deborah Seidman is our lucky winner. So congratulations, Deborah. Thank you so much for participating, for joining us. Um, I hope you and everybody else is having a wonderful time. Deborah will reach out to you afterward to coordinate how to get your cup. And uh, I just wanna to say to all of you, thank you. It's just wonderful to have you with us tonight. Yeah, congrats, Deborah, um, on this beautiful piece. And if others are jealous, there's still time to bid on the other two pieces. Um, now you'll hear from our county executive, George Latimer. Um, he's a really strong supporter of Claire Art Center, and he's usually with us at Hand in Hand to participate in the auction, our Fund the Mission moment. Um, we're sorry we couldn't have him here in person tonight, but he did record a few words about Claire Art Center um, and what it means to the community. And so um, now you get to hear from County Executive George Latimer. Hi, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. And I'm here virtually rather than in person, as we usually are, to extend my warmest greetings to all my friends at the Clay Arts Center and the friends and the family members that are so committed to the mission of the Clay Arts Center. This is the annual hand in hand benefit, but it's the first time we've had to do it virtually. Usually we're all together at the Willow Ridge Country Club. And over the last number of years, I've been very honored to have served as a, an auctioneer in those past times. Today, I bring you greetings from a grateful Westchester County. Clay Arts Center has brought world quality clay art right into our backyard, right there in Port Chester, uh, easily accessible to everybody all across Westchester County. And funding the mission tonight and every day really helps to continue that mission. We've had artists from all across the globe join us right there in Beach Street to uh, bring their vision in clay to life. So we join Emily Peck and the team wishing you a wonderful uh, fundraiser. Next year, we'll do it together in person. But uh, for now, let's make sure this institution thrives because it benefits all of us. Have a wonderful night. Yeah, well, thank you, George. Uh, I really appreciate those kind words and also your leadership during this time, um, what you've done for the nonprofit community, the arts community, on the business community in Westchester um, to help us keep going, keep going strong. We really appreciate it, so thank you. Uh, one of the things the money we raise tonight supports is our community arts programming. These are programs um, that reach people in both the Port Chester community and the broader Westchester community. Um, James, who gets to work on these programs, will tell you a little bit more about them. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, our community arts programming here at CSC was really the driving force uh, behind becoming a nonprofit in 2006. So it, it's really at the heart of our mission. Um, the programming has faced um, some COVID challenges, um, but I am happy to say that we have our community arts programming um, with on-site clay classes uh, for many Port Chester elementary, middle, and high school students happening right now. Um, and that we're in the middle of that term, which is wonderful. And um, it's happening five days a week, Monday through Friday. And um, having the kids back on site really means everything. And it's really serving as our new um, after-school arts program. So it's really wonderful. And that program is free to all students. And to keep it free to all students, we need your support tonight to keep that going. Um, and we need it now more than ever. Um, so we also have uh, restarted other um, community arts programs virtually, um, and we work with not only youth, but also adult learners. So, and this looks like partnering with local uh, social service organizations and senior centers as well. So we have a lot, we have a lot of things going on for sure. Um, so why don't we hear from some, some of those dedicated uh, community arts partners um, and the people behind those programs that make them happen. I joined the Clay Arts Center in 2014 as a high school student, but now I'm the community arts coordinator. We have had the privilege of partnering with the Clay Arts Center for several years, and lucky us. Gilda's Club Westchester is so grateful for the long-standing partnership we've had with Clay Arts Center in offering clay expression. As a young student, I was grateful to be able to take a ceramics class just down the street from my home. As a community arts coordinator, I'm happy to be able to share the programs and opportunities that we offer to our residents and community members. This program provides our community of cancer patients and their families with an incredible opportunity for stress reduction, emotional release, and meaning making. Our students love getting their hands messy. They love digging in and feeling all the cool wet clay and then the final result is the best part. Our students love showing their parents and our teachers love watching their kids engage in such a fun creative way. I understand how difficult it is for residents to access educational arts programs in our community. 
Over 60% of our population speaks Spanish, and we want to make sure that everyone feels invited and included in our programming. Although programming will look different this year, we will continue to work with the partnerships we have created and continue to serve Portchester students and residents. We love the Play Arts Center so much because they just bring new and innovative ideas to our kids, and we are so grateful for that. Play Arts Center community arts programs have been well known and anticipated by many. We hope to continue to serve our community and be able to provide well-needed educational arts programs to all. We are also grateful for our wonderful mural that they put together for us, and it reminds folks every day of our wonderful partnership. Community arts programs are essential to our community and are made possible by contributors like you. As one of our members shared, for the precious hours we are here, we are whole, we are at peace, we embrace the joy of the unknown. Thank you, Clay Art Center, for forever nurturing our souls. And this is why Clay Art Center matters. Thank you for supporting the Clay Art Center. Great, thanks so much, Jen Fallon and Zeltson. Um, you know, the idea of community uh, takes many forms here at Clay Arts Center, and we take a lot of pride in having our programs be as inclusive as possible. Yeah, and to that end, this summer, the board affirmed our commitment as an anti-racist um, organization. You can see the full statement on our website in the About Us section, uh, where we laid out our beliefs and also um, some of the resources and guiding principles that got us there and our goals for the future. We are committed to diversifying our board, staff, and programs to reflect the diversity of our country, the Port Chester community, and showcase the, showcase the diverse ceramic artists and really highlight um, some different voices. This is ongoing work that will allow Clay Art Center to live up to our mission um, as to serve the community. Um, and we're all really committed to continuing to dedicate our time and energy to this work. Yeah, and um, to that point, we, um... You know, we have a wide range of opportunities through new initiatives and expanding um, curriculum and content. And we, we really are welcoming students of any skill level um, to come in and, and enjoy our new revamped uh, programs and studio. Um, and even through the closure and the reopening restrictions we're currently facing, um, we're really proud to have restructured our classes our open studios. Um, we've created a contactless uh, curbside clay service um, along with um, virtual demos and lectures um, with visiting artists and attended by students from um, all around the world, really. Um, so we are committed to continuing to grow and offer the most creative, safe studio environment possible. Um, but we need your help to do that. Um, so please uh, keep giving and, and we're, we're getting to our goal. Um, so many of the programs and experiences we're talking about tonight are really Really only as good as our teachers. And we have a wonderful, amazing group of artists instructors leading the classroom experience here. And um, that brings me to this looker over here, which is this beautiful mug by one of our longtime instructors, Georgia Tenor. Um, you know, it's funny, I thought this was a stoneware mug when I first saw it. And it is actually a beautiful porcelain um, throne mug. And um, it is, uh, what Georgia does is she takes iron um, bearing sand from Martha's Vineyard and actually wedges it into her porcelain and it's fired uh, at cone 10 to reduction right here at Clay Art Center. So this is in the auction. Yeah, and this piece is by Don Reynolds. Um, he is a Clay Art Center artist and also a instructor at Clay Art Center. Um, it's this colorful patterned wall plate is slab built and decorated with underglaze wash and glaze. Um, and it can be hung on the wall. There's um, uh, bearings in the back to allow you to do that. Um, and then this other piece in front of us is by Zoe Scheller, who's a former artist and resident at Clay Art Center. Um, and when we closed our studios and uh, transitioned to virtual programs, uh, we were able to bring Zoe back into our teaching family, even though she's based in Colorado. And she helped us create one-time and multi-session adult and um, youth virtual classes. Um, and so we really enjoyed being able to have Zoe as a teacher again, even if she can't be on site. Um, and this piece is Wheel Thrown Porcelain Vase, features white gold luster and cone five glazes. Um, and before we um, head into our next video, I just wanted to check again, because it seems like the number is really increasing and we really appreciate all your support. Um, we're about 93,000 to our $115,000 goal. Um, and I'm getting some weaving from Wendy on the side, which says maybe a little higher than that since we last checked, which um, is totally amazing. So thank you to all of you. Um, that's you know, great, uh, great to hear and we really appreciate it. Um, you know, as you can see, there's a breadth of programming and work at Clay Art Center that this money is gonna help us support. So thank you all for donating. Um, our next video and our last video um, is from a longtime student of ours who came to us as a student 
um, became very committed to the place and is now are the chair of our board of directors. Um, so now you'll hear from Carol Shevlow. Good evening, I'm Carol Shevlow, president of the board at Clay Arts Center. I came to CAC more than 13 years ago as a student. In my wildest dreams, I never could have imagined we'd be closed for months in 2020 due to a pandemic and would be having an online auction. Reflecting on these last seven months, I am so proud to be part of this organization, filled with people who knew from the beginning how to pivot when we had to close our doors and how to take a stand and formulate a plan within the organization to help further social justice. We did not sit idle for a single day under Emily's leadership, the staff's dedication, and the board's guidance. We moved forward while staying connected to our community, even though our doors were closed. My Friday class met each week via Zoom. Jean sent us inspiring emails with sentences like, I'm fed up, but not giving up, along with an assignment each week and videos of how to hand build belly jars. We were fortunate to have moments of endless learning from a master teacher who cared about keeping us connected and sane while we were locked away in our homes. From day one, CAC artists, students, and teachers have built a community that support one another in the center. I think back to one of our first fundraisers when we just missed being hit by a tropical storm. All those emails, phone calls, and late night decision to spend money on the floor for the tent as the storm was predicted to ruin the night. We have certainly come a long way from back then when we brought into the benefit every item from ice, forks, and lights to our last fundraiser at a beautiful, fully equipped country club. To all the local restaurants, wine stores, and businesses who donated through the years, thank you. I hope we have done our part to support you during these unprecedented times by shopping and eating locally. I look forward to being together in person next year. To all the artists who have donated to our fundraisers, thank you. I know my own ceramics collection has grown dramatically during this time. So I've tried to support artists who are unable to travel to shows, workshops, and who needed our support. On behalf of the board of directors, I'd like to send our heartfelt thanks to all of the staff and volunteers who got us ready and the doors open this last month. Walls washed, doors painted and plastered, plexiglass installed, hand sanitizer throughout the space and a new sidewalk. What an amazing community. We could not have done it without you. Of course, all of this hard work to get us open safely takes more than just the hard work of volunteers and staff. We need your support financially as well. So please be as generous as possible. Help us to stay relevant in the play world. Help us to stay strong to be able to support established and emerging artists. Please bid on auction items or make a direct donation to help us support programming, youth scholarships, and the residency. Thank you for joining us tonight and supporting us, and I look forward to seeing you back in the studio. Great. Well, thank you, Carol. It has been really wonderful um, to work with you as a partner and um, leader of this organization. So thank you for all that you've done for Claret Center and for um, sharing your words with us in that video. Um, we're getting to the end of the evening, um, and thank you all for being with us. Um, we're going to do one last fundraising check. Um, just remember that donations are open on our GiverG website until October 30th. Um, if you're having trouble with the QR code, uh, I heard it's a little bit small for some people, you can go to giverg.us backslash hand in hand, um, or you can always reach out to Wendy tomorrow. Um, we'll also have donations through the Clarence Center website. Um, but now to look to see where we are to goal, when we last checked while the video was going, we were at... Um, looks like 95,500 towards our $115,000 goal. So thank you so much. Um, we are so excited to um, be so close to our fundraising goal and really appreciate all that you have given and supported us. Um, yeah, and now we'll just uh, talk a little bit more about the auction. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna look at one, one final piece uh, in our auction tonight. Um, this beautiful tile is made by artist and not Shifton. Um, the title of this piece is um, Tile in Cobalt. Um, it has this beautiful cobalt blue botanical motif. Um, it is a solid tile, substantial size. It's 12 by 12 inches and it is one inch uh, deep as well. Um, so it's a really beautiful, beautiful piece. Important to mention, it also has a very secure, um, well-engineered hanging mechanism in the back. So you can, um, if you win it tonight, take it home and, and show it off to all your friends. Yeah. Well, and thank you, Anat, for donating this piece. And thank you again to all of our artists for um, the beautiful pieces that you've donated as well. 
Um, as a reminder, the auction closes tomorrow night. Um, starting at 8 p.m., our sculpture lot will close. Um, and then at 8.15, our cup lot will close. And then at 8.30, our functional, functional ceramic lot will close. Um, so I know there's been some bidding wars going on. Um, so you might want to keep an eye on your favorite pieces. Um, you have another day to keep bidding. And hopefully, you can get the pieces that you got your eyes on. Um, now we're to the end of our evening. Um, so thank you all for being with us. Um, I first want to thank all of our donors, um, everybody who supported us tonight and who supported us through um, this whole time that we were closed. Uh, we really appreciate everything you've done. Um, it's allowed us to be at a secure and strong place um, right now and we'll be able to look towards the future and continue to look towards growth. So thank you all for your generous, generous donations. Um, I also want to thank our teachers. Uh, when we closed our doors, they were um, creative and innovative. They thought about ways to get our programs out there virtually. Um, they came up with new ways to teach programs from afar. And then once we reopened, um, they partnered with us to help us make sure that we could teach safely, that we could, that they could teach ceramics from six feet away with plexiglass there, with masks on, all things that you know weren't the normal way of trying to teach um, how to do ceramics. Um, but they have been really great at making sure that we offer a wonderful experience to our students. So thank you. Um, and also thank you to our board, um, the board of directors of Clay Art Center. Um, have been great partners um, through this time. Um, it's been wonderful to work with you this last year. Um, and thank you all for your leadership, your support, your time, and your dedication to Clay Art Center. And I'm really looking forward to what we could figure out as we go towards the future. Um, and my final thank you is to the staff. I really couldn't have done it without all of you. Um, you've been <laughs> you've been amazing to work with. Um, you know, James, who came and sat with me tonight, Wendy um, and Jacqueline, who put together an amazing hand in hand and figured out how to do this virtually. Um, you know, all of our staff has been really innovative, has figured out how to, with a sense of humor and great energy and spirit, get us through this time and make sure that we're still offering great programs to the community. So thank you all so much for everything that you've done. Yeah, and I would like to give a special thank you to our students um, who really trusted us to come back into the classroom when we reopened our doors and you know rejoin the studio safely and um, and have been so patient and and been flexible and and really excited to get back into the studios. Um, you know, you, you guys really are the energy in the classroom, and it's incredibly important to have you guys here. And also um, a special thank you to our CAC artists. You know, um, you guys are the the community. We keep using this word community, but you Know, what does that mean? And you know, I think that the CAC artists really bring um, that sense of identity to, to the organization and, and we love you guys. Yeah, so thank you to all of you for joining us tonight. Um, before we go, we're gonna have one more song from the Clay Arts Quintet playing What's Going On. Um, and you know, as we keep saying, you can keep donating, you can keep bidding on your items. Uh, we really appreciate all of you being with us. Um, and thank you and we look forward to seeing you in the studio soon or at one of our virtual programs. Thanks so much. Have a good night and see you in the studio. Enjoy the song. Thank you. 
Thank you.